the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For I listed three reasons here why I believe that there seemed to be such a growing disdain for the church. Number one, the first reason here is because of what I have written as character inconsistencies, especially among the priesthood, among the vessels that communicates the counsel of God. I think the first reason why there seems to be a growing, even a global disdain for the idea of church is because of the many disappointments that people, that includes members, that includes, you know, citizens across territories have had over vessels. It looks like the vessels have not been able to communicate the best and the most of character. So because of character inconsistencies, many people have concluded that the church is not worth their time, their commitment, character inconsistencies. Let me tell you up front that the Bible is not ashamed and afraid to let us know that the vessels that God uses are not perfect themselves. Now, that is not to endorse licentiousness, not at all. But I need to tell you offhand that the godlike expectations we have over priesthood will only leave us perpetually in disappointment. Because in truth, the best and the most of us still remains human. Are we together? When Jesus walked upon the earth, the Bible does not hide his humanity. He was hungry. He wept. He was angry. He flogged people at the temple. Yet the Bible calls him the Lamb of God. Character inconsistencies. While it is true that as men and women of God, we must continue to trust God to rise to levels where our lives become models enough, enough to inspire a generation to love God. I must on behalf of priesthood plead that we have a high sense of tolerance as we watch men and women communicate the counsel of God because the best of us is still human. This is a very uncomfortable admittance but I tell you contained in this admission is, is, is liberation, liberty, deliverance. There is a godlike expectation upon the priesthood that is putting so much pressure on people. So we feel guilty when we are hungry. We feel guilty when we are angry. We feel guilty when we are sad. Men and women of God will have family issues. Men and women of God may have all kinds of issues, health issues. That is the reason why the object watch this now the object of our projection must be jesus himself and not men are we together now yes men are ushers ushers leading us to the christ the bible says looking up to jesus unto jesus so the first reason why i believe there is a growing a growing disdain for the church is character inconsistencies number two number two is very instructive please write the absence of intelligent life applicable teachings that offer real life solutions to human problems the second reason i'll be patient so you can write the absence of intelligent life applicable teachings that offer real solutions to human problems. I believe and I am convinced that this is the second reason why there is a growing disdain for the church. The absence, one more time for emphasis, the absence of intelligent, life applicable teachings that offer real problems, offer real solutions to human problems. Please look up. And this is a charge to ministers of the gospel, respectfully speaking. For as long as our sermons, for as long as our teachings are 
laced with all kinds of prejudices and biases and do not bring real scriptural solutions to the problems of people, our pews will remain empty. This is true. Never downplay the desperation of humans to see solutions provided for their problems. They will go to any length and if the church stops being a true solution center by giving people an, a scripture-based orientation that translates to solutions, our pulpits, our pews will remain empty. Someone shout, God forbid. So the second reason why the church does not seem to make that much impact in society is because of the absence of intelligent, life applicable teachings. I confess to you that I will not come and sit down under a spiritual leader who will not enlighten my mind and grant me scripture based teachings with intelligence communicated articulately to help you make quality decisions. Are we together? And now you see, in our world today, as we know, there are many alternatives, many alternatives that seem to propose solutions. So if the church must remain relevant, especially in the times that we live in, we must restore doctrine. We must restore intelligent, life-applicable teachings. That when I invest one, two, three, four hours in a church, I should go out feeling happy, not regretting that I wasted my time. I should live wiser than I came. Is that true? I should live with a greater understanding about the mysteries of the kingdom, the laws of life. The intelligence gotten from church should translate to excellence in the workplace, excellence in society. There should be a distinctive difference between a believer who has been methodically mentored in church and one who has not been around the church. But sadly, the case is not so in many regions. So you cannot tell by spiritual intelligence who has been faithful in church and who has left church because it looks like they all behave the same way. The Bible says, and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. The wisdom component, the intelligence component must be restored to our pulpit. When they looked at Peter, these were uneducated, unlearned men. But when they looked at the level of intelligence, Peter was communicating the gospel with such precision. The Bible says they learned that he had been with Jesus. When you follow him, he makes you. He is a maker, not just a savior. He makes men. He turns you from a weak you to a strong you, from an unenlightened you to an intelligent you. Did the Bible not say in Job chapter 32 and verse 8, Elihu speaking said, but there is a spirit in man. It says, and the breath or the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Are we together? In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and here's what he had to say. He said, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, he says, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And this is the assignment of the prince of this world. He has a singular assignment of blinding the minds of people so that they do not have the requisite level of spiritual orientation that translates to a victorious Christian life. In Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, And I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. It says, And they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. I charge every co-laborer in the gospel in Manchester here, the United Kingdom, Europe, and across the globe. We must obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ to make every church experience become a life-transforming experience. 
people are tired of religion and dead rituals that do not sustain power people desire to be taught by the word to be built by the word are we together now yes number three the third reason very quickly why I believe that there is such a growing disdain for the church is the absence of genuine spiritual power that backs and defends our propositions the absence of genuine spiritual power that backs and defends our propositions there are many things we say and we claim God can do but the requisite spiritual power to prove it here and now seems to be absent the absence of genuine spiritual power that backs and defends our proposition so for instance we say Jesus heals and we shout amen but when there are sick people still moving around not healed eventually they will leave church we say Jesus is able to prosper and several people come from all kinds of backgrounds and now they come to Jesus and they cannot be lifted beyond the, the quality of the current quality of their lives we must introduce a gospel that works if Jesus heals we must be able to prove it if Jesus lifts we must be able to prove it hallelujah if Jesus restores we must be able to prove it if Jesus can grant speed to men we must be able to prove it the world that we live in now does not fall to blind sentiments the world that we live in now requires an evidence and the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says ye shall receive power say power please shout it say power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and by that empowerment you will be witnesses witnesses more than preachers you will be witnesses unto me a witness is a validator of a claim the singular assignment of a witness is to make true whatever claim you have made and no witness is a true witness until you have a token of truthfulness called evidence when you go to the court of law are we together now yes you can't just say i am a witness the judge will ask you present your evidence so when you say jesus lifts the world will say where is the evidence someone will become a genuine witness with your evidences all around you all around you when peter healed the man at gate beautiful they were summoned by the jerusalem council and the bible says that peter did not go alone he carried his evidence the man who had been healed with him and when peter made his propositions defending the healing of that man the Bible says they looked among themselves and they said look this is a notable miracle there's nothing we can say against it we must trust God for grace to be able to demonstrate everything that we claim Jesus is everything that we claim he can do so when you see someone who has been oppressed by all kinds of demonic forces and you tell them Jesus is able to set you free and they say I believe I hope that you will have the power to prove in reality let me show you a scripture Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 look at this scripture very closely Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Acts of the Apostles then Pete then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them is that in your Bible verse 6 and the people with one accord in fact let's read together verse 6 ready one to read and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake uh-huh hearing and seeing take note hearing and seeing if it is the gospel men should hear then they should see hearing and seeing that Jesus heals hearing and seeing that Jesus lifts 
hearing and seeing that Jesus restores for many people they've only heard it's time for the world to see for many people they've only heard that it is true he restores they've only heard that it is true he's able to save unto the uttermost but it's time to see you can doubt what you hear but you will hardly doubt what you see is that true Jesus will be lifted again in the name of Jesus even over Europe I prophesy that Jesus will be lifted again my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Over 